r slash credit. How did you find out your SO was cheating on you? Dated for two years until one day, out of the blue she says she's not happy anymore and breaks up with me. It sucked but I figured it was for the best, if she wasn't happy. About a week, after we had broken up I saw her at the bar with some guy who she sheepishly admitted she was on a date with. Later that night I end up standing next to him ordering drinks. He apologized to me for the awkwardness. Yeah it's just weird, since we've only been broken up for a few days and she's already dating. He pauses, a few days? She and I have been seeing each other for like 3 months now. We stared at each other for a second. And then my ex comes running up to pull him away from me. He shrugged her off and told her to go fuck herself and then left the bar. That's how I found out my ex had been cheating on me for 3 months before apparently Gil took hold and she broke up with me. Update, I bumped into the other guy a few months later at a bar and we actually talked about it. It was weird hearing about it from his perspective. In his mind he had thought she was just really flaky, but after speaking to me it just all clicked for him. And we went through some of the times when he couldn't reach her because she was with me and vice versa. Not sure how I didn't pick up on it. Either way I'm happily married now and I think she had to move home and live with her mom. I already was suspicious for a few months that something was going on with her new cow walker, but she always said I was just jealous and there was nothing to worry about. One night she told me she is going out with a bunch of cow walkers, including him. I don't like the idea, but I can't force her to not go. So I watch her shave her whole body, put her best clothes on and some perfume. She never used perfume, she had bought it recently. I wait for her, drowning my thoughts in vodka all night. She doesn't come home until 4 in the morning, when I finally fall asleep. When I wake up the next day she acts like nothing happens. I decide to believe her and let it go. Fast forward 3 days later. I'm at an important convention for work and her cowalker's wife calls me in tears because a friend of hers had seen them in a bar, fully getting it on. I call my GF and she just says she doesn't know what to tell me. Turns out it was a date, not a get together with all the core workers. So I'm completely falling apart at this venue, trying desperately to hold myself together until I can excuse myself and cry hysterically behind the building. The cowalker's wife was a childhood friend of my GF and the two had just married a few weeks ago. In Vegas and all, her parents paid for everything. I was together with my GF for almost 8 years at that point. The cheaters are now happy together and have a family. I still hope that one day one of them will cheat on the other and they have a dirty divorce. I will celebrate with champagne when the day comes. Edit. Typo edit. You think it's safe to post on Reddit? Cause none of your friends are on it until an online magazine they all, including your ex, read posts it on their front page. Guess I'm gonna think twice before posting something here now. D thanks. Not just kept being a good boyfriend until she felt guilty and told me I never suspected it. At least she had some conscience because she could have had her cake and ate it too. Could have strung me along for years and I would have been none the wiser. I loved her. I thought she was the woman I could spend the rest of my life with. Took me 4 years of being single before I was able to trust anyone after that. I was so oblivious the last time that after it happened, I hugely overcompensated, questioning every odd plan made and etc. I'm kind of glad in a way that I waited 4 years because it taught me that being okay with being alone or single is incredibly valuable and I've noticed more and more people since then that can't be alone. I used to be a guy that would let girls walk all over me just to keep peace happy wife, happy lifestyle, but now, while I still compromise and give freely, I don't take bullshit from anyone because I'm not afraid to be by myself. He gave me all his passwords when we first moved in. I didn't want them, but he insisted on it. And then he'd start asking me to answer some emails from time to time because it was stuff he didn't want to deal with. So I guess I was like his secretary. Anyway once he was away on business and I decided to check his email. Found all kinds of Craigslist hookup replies. He was trying to hook up with someone while he was out of town. 
I confronted him when he got home and he had the nerve to say I should feel sorry for him because it turned out none of them were real women, just webcam sites and stuff, so he didn't get laid. He was jealous because if I posted on Craigslist as a woman, I'd have my pick of guys. What a winner. <laughs> Left a Facebook logged in on my phone and I woke up to a lot of messages from the guy. It was supposed to be a trip to see her family. This was three days ago. Edit. Thanks everyone for the kind wishes. I should clarify, this is my wife, and we've been married for less than a year. The upside is we have separate property, and nothing joined. I have taken this as a learning experience, it sucks, don't get me wrong, but I guess you could say I've grown up a lot from this. There was a quote another user showed me that really stuck out to me red flags look normal when you're wearing rose colored glasses there was a lot of sketchy things going on and because of this I was sure I had to leave for my own mental health as well as because I can't trust her. But to anyone else going through this stay strong it gets better. I'm in a new town with literally zero friends here and I'm still finding a way to move on one step one day at a time. Feel free to message me, anyone if you want to talk, not just about this but about anything. Life can feel very lonely, especially when people have chosen sides on this. Stay strong all, I believe in you. Edit edit, I'm slowly working through my inbox, because I really do want a chance to say hi to everyone that messaged me. So, also, thank you thank you thank you for messaging me, it really does make things seem less lonely, and I appreciate every one of you. My co-worker told me he saw her being carried to her car at 4am by another co-worker of mine. She left this part of the story out when she stumbled home drunk that night. Confronted her, she confessed they made out. Fast forward to present day, and I'm still trying to recover from what she did to me. After this kiss she kept going with him, and eventually fucked him twice. She told me both times. I literally had to walk into my apartment one day, to find her in bed with him. I quit my job, we all worked together, and we broke up finally. That was 3 months ago. I'm still fucked up. She was my best friend and all of a sudden set out to destroy me. First time, her friend didn't outright tell me, but hinted very strongly. At the time my, now ex, wife and I lived in a bad area, so we had set up security cameras. She didn't think I had any reason to check them, or maybe just forgot they were there, either way caught on camera. I gave her two months to come clean. The first I didn't say anything, and the second I did what I could to try to guilt her into telling me. To this day, even with the evidence and the kid, conceived while we were together, she still won't admit it. Second time, different girl, we were already having issues, so she went to stay with her friend. Gave her the benefit of the doubt, but when she came back I saw texts from the other guy. Four and eight years later they are both still trying to fix things. Never gonna happen. Got an email from my friend's husband. He introduced himself to me in these words, we haven't met yet, but I'm the man who caught your husband with his tongue down asterisk 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 s throat and his hands all over her. My friend, my husband. He denied it and tried to pretend nothing ever happened, nor could it ever happen. She admitted it straight away. Wasn't apologetic though, because drunken slobbers happen. When he finally admitted, turns out they were full on making out outside her house. We have nosy neighbors, as well as outside her house, and that this wasn't the first time. I'm still trying to decide if it was just a kiss is enough, or if it completely negates 7 years. I hope that for the rest of her life, she only shits hedgehogs. Because friends don't do that to friends. I was married for about 6 months and something just wasn't right. Finally one day her and I were driving in her car to her parents for an event and once I got there I dropped her off and said I wasn't feeling well, that I was going to go back home instead of staying. On my way home I stopped at a grocery store parking lot and tore her car apart. Finally found a cell phone hidden behind the trunk liner. Turned it on and read the text messages. All of the texts she sent to her boss saying she missed him and that she was on her way etc coincided with all of the times she said she was meeting her girlfriends for lunch or something. 
It was a phone he bought for her. I called the number, and he was surprised it was me, her husband on the other end. I chewed him out, and he played dumb. I explained he can keep her. I'm done. I called the wife from the same phone, and told her I found her phone. Don't bother coming home. It was like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. What I suspected for months was finally confirmed. I wasn't crazy. I went to Walmart and bought new deadbolts for the house. It turns out she had been sleeping with her boss for at least 6 months prior to our wedding as well. I'm like why even marry me then? I don't get it. Man I wish I had access to GPS trackers back then, like we do now. That would have made things so much easier, he would have been much better to confront them at his house or at a motel etc. Oh well. Once we separated and I'd filed for divorce, her maid of honor that was in our wedding reached out to me and next thing I know we are having drinks and began to date shortly thereafter. The soon to be ex-wife hated that. Bonus. She started going on friend dates with him and all her friends agreed that was normal. One friend date ended with her at his place, I was obviously mad, so I checked her phone a lot, and behold she was fucking him, but it gets worse. We break up, and she begs for me to get back together with her with her, and I do cause I still love this girl. Things get worse and worse, and we finally take another break, where I'm gonna just end it. She tries to get back together with me again, but before we talk about it, I texted the guy who I caught sleeping with her to see what really went on. He then provided me proof that she had been sleeping with other guys throughout our entire relationship, which she had provided for him, since he felt uncomfortable with her trying to bang him, so the guy who I hated the most in my life ended up saving me from making the worst decision of my life by staying with her. Nothing has ever felt so shit to me, but I know things will get better. Luckily I managed to prove what she did to our mutual friend group, and she has been struggling to find friends since. Fuck her. She had two girls prior to our relationship, which were a three year old and one year old when we got together. After being together for a year we had our son. She stopped working to do the stay at home mom thing which was fine. I was able to take care of us until the kids would go to school then she could work again if she wanted 4 years later the girls are in school and she wants to work again. We find a daycare for our son and she goes back to work. About 3 months after she started working she tells me her and a friend I knew were going shopping for school clothes for the kids but my spid a senses went code red. I'd never been suspicious of her at all before. I didn't even know her phone password, but I watched her unlock it over her shoulder later that night and got it. The next morning, before I leave for work, I'm usually the first one awake in the house. I check her phone and see she'd spent the day with her boss at his house. I confront her about it and she claims nothing happened and they just hung out. We fight about it all day and I even came home from work because I couldn't keep it together. Still not knowing how I wanted to proceed I sleep on it till the next day. I ended up getting her phone again later that day after she'd told him I found out etc and based on their conversation I don't think it got physical but there was definitely something and the want to was there at least on her part. He was also in a relationship of his own. Doing more detective work I noticed she'd shaved everything prior to going meet him, which she never did, and I couldn't deal. Even if nothing happened that day I knew where her mind was, and I've never been so distraught in my life. Everything I thought I could count on in life was gone. My biggest motivation to get up every day and strive for what we wanted in life was gone. We had plans to move to another state in the near future, just my entire foundation was shattered. She was my best friend and the person I thought I could rely on through everything and that's what I gave to her, but that's what I got in return. I couldn't sleep, couldn't go 30 minutes without a crying episode even at work, food I loved didn't taste good, I could barely eat, and lost about 30 pounds, people telling me I looked sick. I think for a brief, while I literally lost the will to live. My kids were the only thing that got me through that time. Even to this day it still hurts though. I couldn't even type this without tearing up. I told her the day she left my house he doesn't really want you or the kids. You forget he also had a relationship? 
You're both side pieces and you think this will last? You're giving up everything for nothing, and when he leaves you, and you realize you fucked up it'll be too late, and I'll have moved on. And that's exactly what happened. Fast forward 3 months and they're supposed to be moving in together, he goes total ghost mode on her, and never speaks to her again. Not 2 weeks after, that she's telling me she fucked up, and wants her family back. That was 3 weeks ago, still don't know what to do going forward. After a year and a half of marriage to a lovely caring partner she suddenly stopped being loving. Went to South Africa to see her mom. Little contact. Ended up staying for 6 weeks instead of 2. Came back furious at me for panicking because she never wanted to talk to me and wouldn't tell me what was going on. She announced she was going to spend 6 months in South Africa because we were having troubles and her mom wasn't well. Insisted that I must support her financially the whole time. We argued about this, but she would not budge I decided to wait and see before I gave her anything. She left. I hacked into her Blackberry. Found hundreds of texts mls and photos showing she had been planning this with a guy, an ex over there, for months. Also found texts and messages to and from another one of her exes arranging hookups going back over a year, including while all this went on. There was more, but I couldn't take going through more. Gave it all to a divorce lawyer. And then the mask really dropped, her real personality came out. She came back, blamed me for everything, because I was jealous. Total projection, of course, insisting I go for counseling, saying I had crossed the line. She tried to totally break me, make me submit, and let her do everything openly that she did in secret before. I threw her out, but had to call the police on her when she broke into my house. I wasn't the best husband, but I was a good one, and I really tried to make our marriage perfect. I did so much soul searching to try to see what I had done to deserve this. But I told her to go to hell, and one very expensive divorce later I was finally free. His Uber receipts didn't match with the activities he said he was doing. He said he went to see movie, but his receipt said that he went checking into a hotel. I told him I know he cheated on me, but he doesn't know how until today how I know. He asked for my forgiveness and we stayed for 6 months, but it didn't work out because he acted like he is entitled to my trust since he already asked for forgiveness and didn't understand recovery takes time. He also tried to turn the table on me regarding the trust issues. I couldn't take it anymore, so I ended things with him abruptly and block him everywhere. After a month, I saw him yesterday with another girl and I turn around walked off. I do not want to engage with him in any situation. Some days has been a struggle, some days has been quite a breeze. Most importantly I don't have to listen to his problems and support him anymore. What I know is he still haven't get a job until today point I hope karma will serve him well soon and he gets to understand and feel the same pain he has inflicted on me. I never ever cheated in my life and won't do to someone cause I know how awful it feels. I feel really unclean with myself sometimes especially after the fact he slept with me the next day after his one night stand. Had a weird moment where I wanted to play a game on her phone while she wanted to sleep and she kinda wrestled the phone away from me and didn't let me use it. A bit of a red flag, but I'll let it slip by. A few weeks later we were on vacation and she was basically texting and hiding her phone from me with every change she got. Confronted her about what was going on and she told me she was texting with a guy from her new workplace, but I shouldn't worry about it. Saw it as another red flag, but let it go again. First day after we got back from our trip she said she wanted to go out with her colleagues for some drinks, something she'd never done before, and told her to go out and have some fun. She came home with her macute smeared a bit on her face and ran to the bathroom to brush her teeth immediately. I was getting really suspicious by this point and installed a sort of a key ligger on her laptop and basically found out she stared going out with a work colleague she told me not to worry about. Ended it the next day. 5 years down the drain. By trying to have a friendly conversation with her now boyfriend, we were friendly acquaintances at the time. 
was asking him how things were, and he mentioned offhandedly that he and my ex had been dating for 3 weeks. Furious at my discovery, I called my ex immediately to get the closure I deserved. Lacking any form of compassion for a man who just had his heart ripped out, he advised me not to do it because she had a big exam the next day, to which I said no, fuck that when I had a big exam. She kept me up all night saying she was going to kill herself. He then proceeded to call me a child for not waiting for her to complete her exam before calling her to talk about it and that I was getting too upset. Her grade tanked and they both blamed me for causing her emotional distress. To top it all off, this was about a week after we had a big fight where she essentially told me that I wasn't good enough for her anymore. Oh the irony. Edit, since this post got bigger than I ever expected it to, I'd like to clarify that the parts where he called me a child. She told me her grade had tanked. They blamed me for it. Were all told to me by my ex-girlfriend. Whether these statements are true or not is not something I have the answer to. This is just my understanding of the event. I apologize to the person in question and they are welcome to message me privately so we can work it out. My ex left her laptop at my apartment, she kind of moved in my flat because it was bigger than hers and I needed to use it to transfer photos to my website. So I downloaded photos from my Dropbox and went in the download folder to see there was some MSN messenger logs saved in another folder. I wanted not to do that but checked anyway and saw a couple of conversations with a guy that turned quite kinky. My heart was beating like hell, especially when I saw the date was 3 months after I met her. I confronted her in the middle of a restaurant later on, so she was trapped and had to tell me, and she said it was just text and nothing happened. My dumb self believed her and forgot about it until, few months later, she kindly informed me that I had to do a STD check because she could have transmitted something. There I was at hospital, standing with my pants down while an old doctor was checking my penis with a magnifying glass. Luckily I was safe. His best friend's wife told me accidentally because my ex-husband failed to get his story straight with his buddy slash scapegoat. Then after the divorce was final he admitted it in a ploy to get me back. XH told me he had been working late, then met his buddy for drinks. I talked to Bud's wife, we were friends, I was oblivious, I didn't go out hunting for info, that weekend at a dinner party and she mentioned a big decision they'd spent the evening discussing the same night XH was supposedly out drinking with him. It's really that dumb, because he could have just said he worked even later, and had a beer at work, or when he got home before me, and I'd have been none the wiser. After the divorce, I found out he'd been with Mariah for months and had managed to keep it from all his friends. His friends only found out about her when he dumped her to try to call off the divorce, but I was long gone by then, moved four states away and started a new life, and he cried to his friends when his stunt didn't work out and now he'd lost us both. If I'd been smarter, I'd have known WAAAAY sooner because he had fucked up and spilled the beans himself early on after he started seeing her and blew it off as a joke about his other life. That's how oh, I was out with Mariah ha 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 became a joke in our soon to be short lived marriage. The joke seemed plausible as just a joke and funny at the time because we lived together, worked together, had the same friends and spent most of our time together or so it seemed. So when could he have actually found the time to cheat? But he did. The worst part of it all, at least that part, is that I'm Polly and would have been fine with Mariah if he'd been honest with me about her. I was having medical issues so his physical needs weren't being met and instead of talking to me about it like an adult and working it out, he cheated and lied and then divorced me when his own guilt overwhelmed him. We had other issues in our marriage and I'm glad it ended the way it did and when it did, turned out to be the best thing he ever did for me, but it was all just so dumb and immature. She checked her email on my laptop, closed it, then we went to her place for lunch. When we get near her place, we find that it's been destroyed because the apartment above hers had a fire and it decimated her place too. Most of her stuff is gone. Fortunately she had renter's insurance. 
I spend the next 24 plus hours helping her piece what she can of her life together after this traumatic event, including helping set her up at a hotel and buying some underwear and other essentials to get her through the next few days. I finally go home, exhausted as fuck after all that, open my laptop, and she left her email account open to an email thread with him about how much she loved him and how she wishes he loved her and how they shouldn't be doing this because she loves me too and it's pointless because he lives in another country and they shouldn't have had sex when she was on vacation while I was at home but really she longs for him. It's the first fucking thing on my screen when I open my laptop. Her friends all told her I was a bad boyfriend because I didn't allow her to follow her heart and have both me and this other guy at once. I got a call from the sheriff looking for him. He cheated on me with a girl who was well known for crying wolf with rape charges. She used to be my friend and openly admitted doing it to get guys in trouble, which is about the time we stopped being friends. He had slept with her, but the only way he would admit it to the sheriff is if I said I wouldn't leave him. At the time I didn't believe he raped her, but now I'm not so sure. Kinda feel bad, but there's no way to know what really happened, as she's still quite the pathological liar. I broke up with him like two weeks after that for other reasons. He told me he was going to drive his truck into some propane tanks. I told him to buy a gun so he didn't hurt anyone, or overdose would be better. This was 13 years ago, and 3 years ago he got into a scuffle with the cops and shot himself when they wouldn't shoot him. Idiot. He told me it was an emotional cheating situation where they, him and his ex-GF, who cheated on him in a similar way, met up a couple times to get coffee and then would text and use Snapchat so their conversations were hidden. This occurred for about 2 months. He says he didn't touch her and that the whole thing ended when she had been sending him underwear pictures. He replied back with 3 of his own pictures and then proceeded to block her on snapchat the next day. This whole thing took place about 6 months ago. I had no idea. He ended it on his own. No indication that something was going on. He told me because we were discussing marriage seriously and he wants to spend the rest of his life with me and couldn't make that vow while holding on to this secret. Honestly I wish he wouldn't have told me since it was minor in the grand scheme of things. I want to work through this with him. He did everything right when one cheats. Told me the truth on his own accord. Was extremely remorseful. Said he would do anything to make this work is gonna go to individual and couples therapy, wants to change and figure out what to do if this happens again, accepts told blame, said it was for his own selfish desires and validation, gave me total access to all accounts and records and whatnot, doesn't blame that he was usually drunk when they would communication but wants to cut down on drinking. He's a lot more open now and in a really weird way I think this has made us stronger and more communicative. Yeah it hurts like hell sometimes, but when we were discussing marriage the night he told me, I said I felt like we could handle anything that was thrown at us, and I think this situation applies. I know I might be naive, but I feel like he's worth it. <laughs> Living together for about a year, things aren't going too well, talked about it, she wasn't as interested, etc. She has been staying up all night with new friends, spending a lot of time specifically with one. All online. They have plans to hang out, was a cool dude, I had no problems with it. I had a company dinner scheduled that night, she decided not to go, they didn't plan it around the dinner, dates kept moving around. I was having liver issues, bilirubin levels through the roof, eyes turning yellow, sick as hell, so I left the dinner early, got home and they were out eating. Already had been suspicious up to this point. Receipt for condoms in the trash. Bed made. She thought she had ended it via text by saying I don't want to waste your time to which I responded she wasn't. As long as she didn't know what she wanted. Clearly she did know what she wanted. It all worked out in the end though. I'm not happy with what happened. But what happened put me where I'm now. Never been happier in a relationship. Last I heard she moved in with him as well. So I assume things are still going well for them. Logged on to the game we both played, Runescape. 
You could join someone's chat which was their username, a clan sort of thing, if I remember correctly. There was someone in there that I didn't recognize. Asked who they were, they said her boyfriend. I said I was her boyfriend. I was in school with her and he was a few hours away. Turned out she was visiting him and spending the rest of the time with me. Flat out denied it to my face and on the phone and got angry at me and tried to make me feel guilty about it. He then sent me screenshots of chats they had between each other. In the end she still kept saying flat out it wasn't true, so I ended it. They have been together ever since. It's been about 6 to 8 years I guess. Good for them? Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I would be so grateful if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel. New videos every day.